I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's time to leave no dye behind. Today, we're gonna dye some tonals with some leftover dye socks that I've had in really inappropriate containers and that I've been leaving sitting in a place accessible to the sun. It's, we need to use them up. These are not ones that I should store for months. We're gonna start off with some yarn prep. I have six skeins of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, and I'm adding removable nylon zip ties to each skein. Uh, I like having these zip ties because it's an easy way for me to grab the yarn while it's in a dye pot, and it reduces the amount of tangles that happen. <laughs> If you want to learn more about the yarn base, I will have Knit Picks affiliate links down in the video description. As for our dyes, I have three 1% stock solutions of Dharma's True Black, Deep Magenta, and Caribbean Blue Acid dyes. I originally mixed this for my Mixing Browns video, and these containers are wonderful for a lot of things. For storing dye socks, it's less useful because dye can sometimes get a little bit up at the seal and it can just be messy when you open. So I don't recommend storing stocks in this long term. It's way easier to deal with uh, squeeze bottles to store it. But now we're going to start adding some dye to some dye baths. I filled my two pots up with some water and we're going to add uh, all the pink, all the black, and a little bit of blue to one and then the rest of the blue to the second pot. I want to take a moment and talk about why you don't want to store your dye stocks with exposure to sunlight. And this isn't about the light fastness of the colors. Even though, yes, exposure to light can cause some molecules to break down, so you could lose some of the dye just through molecular degradation. But when you are making a dye stock, it's not a sterile solution. And so if there is a little microbe that gets in there, it could in theory start to grow and create a little colony in your dye stock. And this is more likely to happen with exposure to light because I don't think there's much sugar in the, any of these solutions. So there's not a lot in here for a microbe to eat and then grow, but they can still spoil and spoilage happens slower uh, when things are stored in a cool dark place. And in a live stream we did notice that there was something that had grown in my yellow dye stock and I had just I just tossed that. Now it can be harder to tell in these more opaque stocks but I didn't notice anything growing in there. You can always sniff the dye to see if it smells off and if it smells off I just wouldn't use it. Not because it could cause a problem for the yarn. You're gonna be boiling the yarn, so that's not the issue. The issues are just similar to why you might not wanna be around any other spoiled food or anything and you just want to dispose of it. But even water that you do sterilize can over time, if you open the container and close it, sometimes it, things can grow in it. And so it doesn't mean that uh, there's something eating the dyes, it's just, it can happen. I took three skeins of our dry yarn and added it to each dye bath. The mixture of pink, black, and a little bit of blue is navy. I was kind of hoping that we could have kept it more purpley, but I think the moment I added the blue, I knew that it was going to go in the more navy direction. And you know what? That's okay. A good navy is always nice to have. And then the other pot is really just our bright Caribbean blue. When I originally measured out these dye stocks, there were three grams of dye, and I've used these dyes for other projects. So I didn't measure today, but I think everything will be at less than a 1% depth of shade here, which means that we have less than one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. Now, I have not yet added acid, and I'm gonna take this yarn over to the stove and bring it to a boil. I never, do it this way. I usually, if I want, maybe I'll let the yarn sit in the dye bath cold for a while and then add acid, but I normally add acid before bringing the yarn to a boil unless I have it at a boil and then I'm going to add yarn and then acid soon after. I don't know. It's not the way I usually go about things. And so I anticipate we're going to get relatively even color coverage here because even though the yarn was dry, we didn't have acid yet, and so that might help us get more coverage. But we'll see if we get breaking on that navy. Since 
I hadn't measured things today. This is a leave no dye behind. I am just adding a big old splash of white vinegar to each dye bath now that we are hot. And after adding the acid, I'm gonna heat the yarn for 30 minutes. And then we'll check in and see if we need to add more acid or what. I was surprised with our blend of black, blue, and pink, how much of the color did strike to the yarn before we added acid. With the Caribbean blue, some had as well, but when I initially lifted the yarn up, the only color we saw at the bottom was the blue. And then slowly some more of the blacks came out of the yarn. But that's a lot of color striking with just the pH of my tap water, which is slightly acidic. It's been 30 minutes since I added acid. And let's take a look and see how we're doing. We've got a beautiful, beautiful blue here. There's a tiny bit of blue left in the pot. But I am going to go ahead and remove the yarn here. Uh, this is a color that can be a bleeder. And sometimes if I leave a tiny bit of color in the dye bath versus letting it cool and letting all the rest of that color bind, then I find that helps with the washing stage later on. Now, as for our other pot, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat here as well. When I picked it up earlier, I did see some extremely subtle evidence of color breaking. And it stands to reason because the pink struck without much acid. Now, there is almost, oh, can you see it? There's a little bit more pink and less pink in areas. Oh, this is super pretty. Uh, there's almost no color left in the dye bath, so I'm also gonna go ahead and remove this yarn and we're gonna let everything cool completely before we wash it. But I do currently have everything all in one pan, and so hopefully we don't see color transfer from one to the other. This is not something that often happens, but especially now that they've heat set, but it could. So I'm not being safe here. <laughs> But we'll see what things look like once it cools. I love that this video so far is mostly time lapse, and yet here I am washing in real time. <laughs> uh, right now it's evening, so I don't really see the dimension in here. So it's looking pretty, um, the coverage is looking pretty even right now. But one of the reasons why I am doing this real time so I was curious if we'll see any bleeding. And so far, oof, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but I see some of the dimension, even with the shadows. So pretty. There's no bleeding with this one. So I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap and then we'll wash the blue. <laughs> and here we go with our bright blue that we know is definitely less than a 1% depth of shade of Caribbean blue and it is bright. It's funny, I bet we could potentially calculate how much blue dye I had if I went back and calculated how much blue I used in the brown. And then there were there was another video for sure where I used some of the blue. So I could probably figure it out, but I don't think we need to worry. Uh, if we need to, we can do a depth of shade look at Caribbean blue sometimes. So we added soap. And there is a tint of some color, but that is not bad. Let me fill this back up and we'll check back in. Ryder just gave me a thumbs up from the stairwell to tell me I'm doing a good job. That was very sweet. Um, all right, let's see. Maybe a hint, but really, really not bad, especially for this color. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it, I think, one more time. Then I'm gonna put my yarn, all the yarn, through the spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll take a look at the finished tonal yarn. Pretty simple project today. And here are our finished dry tonals. The blue is so vibrant, and it just blows my mind that this is less than a 1% depth of shade. Uh, Caribbean blue packs a punch. This deeper blue looked very, very navy at first, or like a muted sort of denim color. 
but now you see more of the pink and the broken that is the pink. The pink struck like on some areas first and other areas later. And so this combination of the deep magenta, a little bit of Caribbean blue and true black gave us a very purple leaning blue. I guess you could call it blurpley. That would work. There are some tonal qualities to this blue as well. Uh, I'm just struggling to capture the color well on camera. Maybe this is a little more accurate? Oh, I don't know. It's not coming through very natural. I do feel like we have some tonal variation in here, but overall the color is so bright and saturated it's hard to see. I think you would see that once you start turning the yarn into something knit or crochet. Oh, but in here you can really see that variation from the colors breaking. I am Rebecca from Cheminits, and I really hope that you enjoyed this quick little leave no die behind. Uh, sometimes I end up with stocks that last <laughs> a while uh, because it just takes me so long to go through them because some of these colors are so pigmented and sometimes I make way too much for what I'm using it for. And so those are things I have to consider. And then it's also the reason why you might see the same colors over and over in multiple videos because I'm still trying to work through that dye I mixed. So in general, it's best to try to mix the amount of dye that you think you need for a project because that makes your life easier, but then you can end up creating something really beautiful uh, on the side. And so if you want to see me do more tonals, please let me know down in the comments. And while you're scrolling below the video, please subscribe, turn on notifications. This is the biggest way you can help support all of the content here on the channel. If you're looking for some other ways to support, you can join to become a channel member and get badges next to your username and then access to some exclusive Chemnitz emotes that are very, very fun and very themed around me <laughs> and interruptions from my lovely dog, Indy. <laughs> You can find more information through the join button that is beneath the video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.